Hi, I'm Jonathan Halcrow, and I'm presenting on behalf of my collaborators at Google, Alexander Moshoy, Sam Ruth, and Brian Perosi. Uh, in this talk, I'll be discussing our paper, Grail, Designing Networks for Graph Learning. So uh, what do I mean by designing networks and graph learning? Um, I'll start with a, a, sort of a, a toy example of a graph learning problem. Uh, so in the a toy example, you might be given uh, a partially labeled set of nodes and uh, some graph on top of these nodes indicating some sort of a similarity relationship. Uh, and then we can use this graph to infer labels for the unlabeled nodes by spreading labels from the labeled set uh, to the unlabeled set. So you can see on the right-hand side, we spread labels from these green nodes uh, to infer that this node is green. We spread from these red nodes to infer that this node is red. Uh, however, as practitioners in the real world, uh, we're rarely given uh, something uh, this clear cut. Instead, uh, instead of a single relationship that's sort of closely relying with our labels, uh, we often have many different types of relationships to pick from. And each of these different types of relationships can have varying quality and coverage. And then it's up to us to try and pick uh, a good relationship from amongst these. Uh, so one particular choice we might make is these dash dotted lines here. Uh, so when we do propagation along these lines, uh, we spread this red node to, the, to this node here, this green node here. Uh, and in fact, we make sort of all of the wrong decisions here. You know, in this case, we were expecting these nodes to be green and these nodes to be red. Uh, and so a bad choice gives us, a bad choice of graph gives us a, a poorly performing graph learning algorithm. On the other hand, a better choice might be to choose the dotted lines from the previous picture. And instead, uh, you know, we make these two decisions correctly, but we're unable to make any inferences about these other nodes. And so you can see the, the choice of graph is, is critical for the performance of, of any sort of graph learning algorithm you try. Uh, so we call this, this problem of selecting the graph, we call this the graph design problem. Uh, and so we assume that uh, for this problem, we're, we're given some multimodal feature space X, uh, and each mode has some natural distance measure kappa. Uh, so an example of what this might be is, uh, say you're, you have a, a catalog of a bunch of products. Each of these products have a bunch of different type of features associated with them. Uh, you might have some metadata and then some uh, simple distance measure on just the metadata. Uh, you might also have some other uh, similarity measures on the content uh, of the, the items in, the, in the, uh, the catalog, for example, like similarity between their images. Uh, and then you might even also have some other sort of like co-purchase type information. So in addition to this feature space, uh, we're given some partial labeling on this feature space. And uh, uh, we've chosen a particular learning algorithm that's a function of a graph on these uh, vertices in this multimodal feature space. And what we'd like to do is find an edge weighting function which allows us to construct a graph, which gives us optimal performance for the learning algorithm. Uh, so in the right-hand side, you can sort of see what this looks like. We have this graph between these nodes of all of these different potential types of relationships. Uh, and we ideally to take a uh, pick a graph that looks kind of like this one on the right-hand side, where we're mostly just connecting things that share the same label or class. Uh, in the paper, uh, we're focusing on designing graphs for a single hop of label propagation. Um, you can imagine sort of generalizing this to any other different types of uh, graph learning algorithms you might try. Uh, in particular, we're choosing a, a label propagation rule that looks sort of like, like this uh, sort of belief propagation type rule where we, we choose a score for a particular node in a particular class is just the, the product of the edge weights between that node and other nodes uh, in that same class. Uh, we assume that the, the edge weighting function that we're trying to design is, is just a function of these sort of natural distance measures that we already have. Uh, and so we're trying to learn some function that sort of combines these in an optimal way. Uh, and what we show in the paper is that in this particular setting, uh, a, a, the choice of edge weighting function that minimizes just the log loss of a of the of the multi class classifier is equivalent to uh, actually just trying to minimize the log loss of a of a the binary prediction of whether or not two nodes are in the same class. So Grail itself is a, a scalable solution to this graph uh, graph design problem, uh, and it's an algorithm with basically two parts. Uh, in the first part, uh, we're generating candidate pairs for the graph using locality-sensitive hashing. 
uh, and I'll, I'll describe what locality sensitive hashing is uh, in more detail in a minute. Um, and this sort of gives us some buckets of candidate points. Uh, and then the second step, depending on whether we're sort of in training mode or in inference mode, we'll either uh, train a model using whatever ground truth we have on pairs within these buckets, uh, or we'll apply the model uh, to try and score edges within these buckets and use that to construct a graph. Uh, so locality sensitive hashing, right? Uh, so a key requirement for Grail is that uh, we have to scale to data sets containing billions of nodes. Uh, so you can imagine uh, a data set with billions of nodes uh, doing an all-pair search is completely infeasible. Uh, instead, what we do is we rely on an approximate similarity search using locality-sensitive hashing. So an LSH function is uh, just a, a hash function, but it has the property that points which are close to each other are likely to hash to the same value uh, while points which are sort of far from each other in some sense are unlikely to uh, share a hash value. Uh, so one concrete realization uh, is sort of illustrated on the right-hand side here. So you can imagine you have this set of points here um, and uh, we're projecting them onto this line down here that we've divided up into segments. So these two green, green points uh, project down into this particular segment. Uh, these points project onto this segment and so on. And then we choose the, the segment uh, that the points project onto as our hash value. And so you can see in this particular choice, uh, this, this LSH function works pretty well because we're generally projecting points which are sort of sharing the same label into the same buckets. Um, however, in the case of Grail, uh, close and far is really uh, dependent on what the model learns. Uh, so we're, we're in a little bit of a catch-22 because we're using this to actually train the model itself. Uh, so what we can show in the paper is that uh, given that we have some uh, LSH functions on the sort of simple per mode distances, uh, we can use these as stand-ins for an LSH function for the model itself. And the reason for that boils down to basically the fact that points which sort of sort of close in these feature spaces should also be uh, close according to our learned similarity, uh, assuming some like basic continuity uh, of the, the model we're trying to learn itself. Um, the, the actual structure of the model that we learn, um, you know, in, in principle, you could sort of choose anything. Um, the most common choice that we use is this uh, neural net on the right-hand side. And in some situations, we also use uh, tree models. Um, uh, but to focus on this particular model, it's uh, basically kind of a, a standard feed-for-old neural network. So we have the sort of the input distances between two nodes uh, here. Um, and then we also have grafted onto this kind of a, a standard two tower uh, architecture where we're learning embeddings of each of the, the points separately and combining these to produce sort of a, 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 an embedding of the edge itself. And we use these two parts together uh, to make a prediction of the similarity of the two points in total. Uh, to evaluate Grail, uh, we start by comparing it against some other uh, similar techniques for learning task-specific similarities for label propagation on two different data sets. Uh, one, the USPS data set is a handwritten digit set uh, scanned from envelopes by the US Postal Service, and they're just represented as numeric pixel values. Uh, MNIST is also another extremely popular handwritten digit data set um, where the, the images have been sized, normalized, and centered. Um, uh, we, the, the techniques we compare to are all taken from this uh, quest for structure, jointly learning the graph structure and semi-supervised classification uh, by Wu et al. Um, I'm not gonna go into sort of detail of how all of these different methods work, uh, but basically you can think of them as sort of tuning uh, hyperparameters and a distance function of this form. There's kind of a standard gradual basis function where we're, we're basically looking at kind of uh, an, a, an adjusted version of the L2 distance in the space. And we're sort of choosing these sigma values uh, to try and optimize the performance of a label propagation algorithm. Uh, so you can see on the right-hand side, uh, Grail generally performs competitively with these other methods. Uh, in MNIST, it does significantly better than some of the other examples. Um, uh, but the, the real point of this paper is not really to sort of uh, show performance on small data sets. Uh, what we uh, really want to talk about is uh, uh, the deployment of, of Grail on very large scale settings. So within Google, uh, Grail has been de deployed for many different problems at this point. 
Uh, one particular application is used by YouTube to try and detect malicious actors. Uh, and for YouTube, we train the grail model to try and differentiate pairs of abusive items uh, from pairs where at least one item is non-abusive. Uh, to start with, I'll talk about the, the efficiency of the LSH function we've chosen. Um, the, we, we evaluate the LSH function in two different ways. Uh, one is the percentage of uh, pairs returned by LSH that are uh, closer than a distance that we've uh, decided is um, uh, a threshold that uh, has very high precision. We call those strong ties. Uh, the other is that the percentage of pairs that we find which are below uh, some moderate precision threshold. And we, we refer to these as weak ties. So in the, the, the LSH function case we've chosen here, and again, this is sort of just by uh, doing sort of parameter tuning over simple distance functions of individual features that are going into the model. Um, we find that over half of the pairs that, that come out of our tuned LSH model are, are what we call strong ties, uh, and less than a quarter of them are weak ties or worse. Uh, on the other hand, comparing to kind of a naive random baseline, almost none of the pairs that you would find uh, with this sort of approach are strong ties, less than 1%. Uh, and the vast majority of them are weak ties. So uh, using sort of random pairs, uh, we, uh, we would, it would take many more comparisons to, to find a graph of the same quality that we get from uh, using LSH. Um, to illustrate the performance um, is, a, is a little more difficult because in practice, GREL is actually used in, uh, as one piece in a more complex abuse fighting system. Uh, so to try and break out the performance of the graph alone, uh, we, we uh, train a, a simple single nearest neighbor classifier on the graph and compute the precision and recall at various thresholds. Um, to do the evaluation, we chose a, a, a sort of a, a realistic setting where we're, we take just the older percentage of the nodes as our like uh, seed set, uh, and then we evaluate the performance on uh, newer on newer nodes. And th this is kind of uh, sort of the realistic setting where GRAIL is typically deployed, where we have data about things in the past and we're trying to make predictions about new things that show up. Uh, and so you can see, even with this, this very simple classifier, uh, we can uh, get pretty high quality uh, precision and recall. Um, now compared to compare GRAIL to some of the other approaches that are being deployed within YouTube, um, uh, it's, it's used as part of a system that uh, consists of uh, some content classifiers, some heuristics, and then Grail with uh, label propagation. Um, and so you can see the, the content classifiers are, and the heuristics are getting about half. Uh, but then by adding uh, Grail and label propagation onto this, uh, we uh, uh, nearly double the, the recall of, uh, of the system uh, of just the content classifiers and the heuristics alone. So we increased by 89% the recall. Um, one other aspect of the system is that the, the uh, content classifiers and the heuristics generally run sort of earlier in the pipeline and sort of have a first shot at, at classifying items. Uh, and so the content classifiers and heuristics, um, uh, the content classifiers in particular uh, find mostly new things Whereas a uh, grail and label propagation system is finding a lot of items that are sort of older and were missed uh, by the earlier systems. Uh, and I'll give you an idea of the structure of the graph we find. Uh, we plot the degree distribution in two different ways. In the bottom is the degree distribution of abusive nodes and safe nodes. As you can see, overall, uh, abusive nodes uh, have a much higher degree on average than uh, what we call safe nodes or non-abusive nodes. Um, and then when we break this down and just look at the uh, nodes connections to abuse, other abusive nodes, we find that abusive nodes uh, connect with uh, uh, other abusive nodes much more strongly than safe nodes uh, connect with abusive nodes. Uh, and this is precisely the type of thing that we're trying to achieve. We want a graph where abusive nodes connect to other abusive nodes and they don't connect to other safe nodes. So we, when we do label propagation, um, we, we mostly are finding other abusive nodes. Um, and then finally, to, to give you uh, an idea of what the graph actually looks like up close, 
uh, we've, we've plotted a few different uh, clusters that we found in the graph. Uh, the nodes here are colored by the abuse status. Uh, and so you can see that the types of clusters we find uh, on YouTube uh, really run the gamut. Uh, we see situations like this in the top left where we have these sort of intermixed uh, dense clusters where you have some abuse, some abusive, some non-abusive. Um, you know, we have these other like very dense abusive clusters. Uh, we also have situations where we have like very sparse subgraphs of mostly non-abusive nodes, which don't really uh, connect well to each other. Uh, and even, you know, you can see like these uh, kind of interesting situations where you have these small abusive clusters uh, that uh, have sort of weak connections to each other through uh, non-abusive nodes. Uh, and with that, I'd like to say thank you. In particular, I'd like to thank um, uh, our various uh, engineers uh, who have contributed to Grail and the deployment on YouTube over the years. Uh, so uh, thanks.